Um, I changed it to bust down, scrub down, because literally when we would go into these clients' home, it would turn into a certified bust down session. We're not cleaning your typical homes. We're not doing anything like a Molly Mae would do. We are literally starting at the front door by picking up and cleaning as we go. So it's some major sessions that we're doing. Thank you for being a devoted listener of this podcast, Beyond Clean with Ace, dedicated to healthy, positive, and proactive content to support individuals primarily in the cleaning industry. Are you a facilities manager, a frontline staff member, or a building services contractor and are looking for knowledge that will help you advance both personally and professionally? Beyond Clean with Ace is now in season seven and speakers have consistently brought us messages which parallel our key focus of providing proactive knowledge. Many times the conversations here go beyond cleaning toilets, windows, and floors and helping individuals on a personal level. Subscribe and share with others so that everyone's life can be enhanced in healthy, positive, and proactive ways. And now, let's join Dave Thompson, director of the Academy of Cleaning Excellence and your host here at Beyond Clean with Ace. Good morning, everyone. This is Dave Thompson, and you are with me at another episode of Beyond Clean with Ace, where we talk about, well, everything in the cleaning industry. You know, I've been doing this for quite some time, and most generally, you hear me talk about, well, commercial cleaning. But today, I'm actually going to talk to somebody that, well, does a little bit of commercial, but, you know, as we talked, cleaning's cleaning. And I got a feeling we're not going to only just talk about cleaning, but probably a lot of other stuff. So bear with me just a moment, because we've got something we're dealing with here in Florida, not hoping that you have to deal with it, but weather is weather, and Angel Shackleford is with me, but as you can see, She's not usually where you would think we would be doing a podcast, are you, Angel? I am not. I am in the back seat of my truck. <laughs> so literally, we've caught her on the go. And so uh, I thank you for taking some of your time with us today. Um, first of all, let's talk a little bit about who you are, what you do, and what is Buzz Down scrub down. I mean, I, I have to keep trying to say that myself. I get it all screwed up. So let's hear what you got to say. So most people clear that up by saying BDSD. So I <laughs> am Angel. I'm the owner, the founder of Bust Down Scrub Down Cleaning Services, formerly known as Angel's Cleaning Service. Um, I changed it to Bust Down Scrub Down because literally when we would go into these clients' home, it would turn into a certified bust down session. We're not cleaning your typical homes. We're not doing anything like a Molly Mae would do. We are literally starting at the front door by picking up and cleaning as we go. So it's some major sessions that we're doing. Um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my mother hiring me at 11 years old to work with her cleaning company that was J Shack Cleaning Services. Um, she paid me $12.75 an hour. My mother paid me good. I didn't know how rich I was back then until now. Like, hey, my mom was paying me good. And um, the foundation was laid. It was created because of her. I couldn't thank anyone but my mother because when we worked with her, she made us do it right the first time. So that's our motto. We clean your home as if it were our own. And we definitely do it right the first time as well. Well, I, that's what I was just, I was just hearing you say that. I'm like, here's a tagline. We do it right the first time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So it sounds like you need to go in with a shovel and a, uh, um, a blower of something when you come into some of these. I have seen some of your Facebook uh, stuff and I'm like, I can, I can really relate to some of that. Literally, literally, Dave, it, it, it's a process. This job that I'm doing is not for everyone. I have no. five beautiful kids. They've all been um, exposed to that. I'm sorry. Um, I'll tell you one story. <laughs> I took my kids. I'm, sure, I'm sure that they've got a different word that they would use, mom. <laughs> I took them, Dave, to a client's home. And I left to go get some air freshener and just some things I noticed the client might need. Again, we clean your home as if it were our own. So if you need something, more than likely I'm going to get it. So I left and went to the store. When I came back, each one of my kids were sitting on the stairs. And my 17-year-old, he said, Ma, if we leave right now, I'll give you $300. I say, well, son, that's 
a, a good offer. Now, if you got the other 3300 to go along with that, I, I'm going to rock with you. Let's go. And he just got up and he walked back in the house and he was scratching his head. He said, well, mine got that. So <laughs> they were in a very questionable situation. Um, we moved the dresser and literally a drove of roaches just came out. It's like we unearthed them. Um, yep. I'm used to it. Uh, I know it can be a little difficult for some people. Uh, I, I very transparent. So anyone that wants to come on board and be with the BDSD, I, I tell them about roaches. I tell them about the things we, we deal with. And that, that has helped me to find like a good match for the job. Um, I will say this industry is tough. My longest worker was about three years and it's just kind of been hit or miss people coming in and out. And residential is a little touchy. Um, it's not so straightforward like commercial. You have right. to babysit it. I'm going into clients' homes. Got 42 keys to 42 clients' homes. It's not like I, I can just hand it over to a worker and, you know, the client is going to say, whoop de doo they got my key. They're you. Hey, bust it down. So I would say that's the only drawback. And that's why I've deviled more into commercial so that I could fall back, stop being the face of the company and the worker. And, you know, of course, help other families and lighten my load. You know, I think that's, uh, Angel, that is the thing that people don't understand about the business. You know, cleaning is cleaning, and we all agree with that, and we have our challenges on both sides. Mm -hmm. But it is a completely different world between residential and commercial. I think you put that very well. Um, that's why I stay on the commercial side. I did a little bit of residential, and I didn't want to do, uh, well, I, I called it babysitting everything, but you every single little thing has a, a and it should be i mean it's personal it's their house but man you go uh, you know could you just take care of your house just a little bit better i honestly keep it very neutral and i keep <laughs> it um open for everything um we're going to go do a questionable house today i mean we're going to bear it through the storm this is the quiet we get in tampa florida before the sun before the storm you wouldn't even think a storm was coming because it looks so pleasant out but we're used to this so we're gonna okay so let's explain that to people that may be watching this later on or is in another part of the country watching this uh, later today when we uh put this out let's tell people what's going on and why are you in the back seat of the truck <laughs> So everything is closed in Tampa. I mean, McDonald's is open, but it's so noisy there. I couldn't go there. But the, the libraries, they're, they're closed. All of our schools are shut down. You can barely find gas. There are no, there is no toilet tissue and water. So I thought I would just say there's no water, but there's no toilet tissue and water on the shelves. Um, it's crazy. I don't know where that phenomenon started and who came up with it, but it works and everybody buys all the tissue. Oh yeah. yeah. So we're, we're like the pandemic. We're shut down. Literally nothing's open. And the storm will come through and then you'll be on the other side and hopefully we won't have too much damage from all of the, the storm, but fingers are crossed. <laughs> On the other side of the storm that you're getting ready for, I'm sure that you've been through this before. Yes, yes. What happens on the there. other side? What happens on the other side? Give me a little bit of a, a view into what's coming up maybe this next week. Um, for cleaning, that is? Oh, you know, yeah. Yeah, for you and your business and your people that... Listen, we get a lot of last-minute calls. I love those. It, I will say with residential... Um, the the financial side, the revenue, it, you you can control it. It's not a bidding war. You know, you're you're in and you're out. Most of our tasks we do, it's one day. You know, that job I did for thirty six hundred, that was one day. Me and my children, we were there for seven hours, I believe, or forty two minutes. I'm real big on time because it has to make C E N T S for me. Um, I will say it's tiresome. You know, I didn't work the next four days. Normally, if I make that, that amount of money, I don't work for two weeks, but I don't work the next four days because my schedule is booked out for the year. Um, I, I want my kids to be exclusive to me. So I give them that one of a kind experience so that they are. So about maybe about 72 to maybe 75 percent of my clients, they book me for the entire year and they pay me a deposit for the entire year. So January through December, they pay a deposit. We're locked in. Of course, unforeseen things happen. That's fine. But that deposit is non-refundable. Um, on top of everything I do, I'm a single mother. I have five kids, four at home. So I have to make sure 
financially I'm stable, I'm secure. And I'm, I'm the 30 day process for me. Sometimes it's a bit aggravating, you know, especially if you have to pay workers. So I take on what I can handle. I take on what I can shoot. And I've done, you know, the 30 day stretch before I have, but I went into my savings to pay my workers. And you can't do that every time because you're hustling backwards. So building up money just for the business side has been a great asset to me, you know, going in blindly, not knowing what I'm doing and taking on a $40,000 contract. And I paid out from that $40,000 contract. I think I paid out about twenty four to 25000 to the workers that did the flooring for me, the cleaning. And I took that chunk home and it was good. But I had to have that overage to pay them because I pay people when they're done. At, at first I did. Now I'm learning when you get paid, that's when they get paid. Don't don't stretch yourself, you know, too thin. But um, I have some amazing general contractors that I work with. Um, one of my general contractors, he has me on payroll. So the Wednesday that they get paid, I get paid. If I come in and I do a job for them on a Monday, I get paid that Wednesday because I'm big on relationships, um, Dave. And I'm not afraid to tell someone, you know, I'm a single mom. It's just me, you know, and I don't have the coverage to do this or to do that. And of course, you build up your financial revenue and you you get to a place where you're better. But when you're first starting and you're trying something new, you're not better. You're kind of like, hey, I'm just winging this. I'm just making it work. Hey, and, 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 uh, and we all had to start somewhere like that, Angel. I mean, yes. you know, if you talk to anybody in the cleaning industry, we all kind of started the same way and we're at different yes. places in our careers, of course. Absolutely. But, yeah, you just like you said, you always go out there and you got to, oh gosh, I did that. Whoop, that <laughs> doesn't work. And then you learn. And yeah. as you said, uh, I'm thinking as you're talking here, though, it's uh, back to school now. Not all of those kids are going and cleaning houses. Uh, do they still have to do chores at home after school? So I got an amazing program that started with me. Um, being a single mom, it's tough. I was going out into the community cleaning for my clients, and I was coming home cleaning. And I uh -huh. said, cleaning for them, cleaning at home, something isn't right. So I devised <laughs> a hire to retire program, and that program, I'm, I'm – I'm really real, Dave. I can't be fake. I can't make you think this facade is beautiful when it's not. It was very ugly for me. And I didn't feel the worth that I know I needed. So I trained my kids. It took two, almost two long years to get them where I knew they were sufficient and I could walk away and they could do it with their eyes closed. So my 17-year-old, he's a chef. He's actually a chef. He has his own business. So he cool. cooks for us often. Yeah. He teaches the other kids how to cook. And my daughter and my... um my baby girl and then my oldest son who's home with me still they all have their chores they all have what they know they need to do and right. they do it so literally it's a family walk, affair, right yes literally it is and i hired them without pay yes it's just what it's called hire to retire and i retired myself from the home front because there's no way i could get pulled from this end and that end and it made sense for me emotionally you know, it was an emotional struggle. And I felt like I was just being used and I didn't want to be used. So I had to teach them what I know. And now without a shadow of a doubt, my kids could actually run my cleaning company. My clients know my kids. My general contractors know my kids. They understand the assignment. And it's important for me. Well, that's the epitome of a family business. Yes. So, how, I mean, uh, employees, since you mentioned that earlier, I know in the commercial cleaning business, it's you know, it's like a revolving door for some uh, mm -hmm. service contractors. Um, I too ran my own business back in the 80s. It's been a while, but I don't want to do that no more. Thank you very much. Uh, I champion you for doing what you're doing, but I'm not there anymore. Thank you. Um, but I still realize that that is the big part of the cleaning industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Um, I would tell anyone that's thinking about starting a cleaning business, if you don't get sucked into residential, because it, it literally takes a part of you because it's so important, it's valuable, you want that trust to stay where it's at, to first go into commercial. I met two young guys at a um, cleaning conference in Jacksonville. They're 20 and 21, I believe. They made $100,000, never cleaned before in New Jersey, and they are rocking it. 
and that's the way to go. You know, I'm very passionate about what I do, so I don't have any regrets about the way that I went about doing it. It's just that if I had a, probably a little more guidance and understanding, I wouldn't be so attached to the business. You know, I could, I have my way with my clients. They don't care. They don't care if I come to their house in the night. They don't care if I come <laughs> at their house in the day, as long as their house get clean. So I'm not going to lie and say I don't take advantage of that. I do especially with my situation, it's unpredictable being a single mom. I might have to pick a kid up from school. Anything could happen. So I take advantage of that. But I have to find some common ground because as I age, you get tired. You move slower. And I don't want to do this into my later years. So um, I'm pushing more of the hire to retire. We have Kid Clean Camp that my 17, 16, and 12-year-old teach. And um, just getting things more systematic and curriculum-based. I think that'll help me transition into another realm. So that's what we're working on um, collectively because three of my five children are entrepreneurs and they are honestly doing a great job with their business. They're doing better than I was doing at their age. So well, and, but, I don't- But they've had your tutelage, Angel. I mean, you've given them all of the things that they need. They should be. Yeah, they are. You know, some parents want their kids to live in their shadows. You know, I talk with so many of my, my clients and. You know, we're talking with them about the kid clean camp. It's it's like parents have to let the child actually grow into what they want to be. And my children show me what they like, and I just taught them honestly how to love it. And they're doing great. And 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 that's the whole thing. And, and so, do you do you plan? I know that you're you know you're going towards retire from residential, but I heard commercial. Are you going to move towards that later on? Um, I think I would want to collaborate with another um, uh, another cleaning company, which I have already. We have Cleaner Connect. We meet once a month at Fifth Third Bank. We partner with them. Um, and it's just a hub for cleaners to just grow. I can't tell you how tirelessly I, I proved myself to these cleaners that I was no threat. I was not their competitor. They let their guards down. They actually became my friends. And we have a nice group. It's about 14 of us. Um, some struggling, some better than others, and some right. just don't have that confidence to just keep going. So the, the more we meet, the more we connect, the more they see that it's a collaborative effort. Clients have come, you know, the growth side of their business has really expanded. And I, I love everything about Cleaner Connect. It, it's a wonderful feeling. You know, what's so interesting about what you're saying there, Angel, is that back in 82, 83, 84, I was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I did basically the same thing. Tried to convince other people in the in the uh, city that we could all work together. We could we had common things to talk about. We 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 needed to have what what I would what I called back then strength in numbers. Mm hmm. Yes, and it, it's such a competitive world. People are not really confident about what they're doing. And they don't have the ambition and the drive, Dave. That, that's what it boils down to. And it's not a bad thing. It's so common. It's kind of frustrating because it's so many clients out here. I can't clean them all. You right, know? right. Absolutely. That, that's what I told them back then. I said, hey, there's plenty of business for all of us, but we can we can work off each other's energy and tips and tricks and, and all those things to actually provide the city and the people with better services. You're saying yes. the same thing. Yep. And it's just one of those things. It's, it's just changing the mindset. Um, I knew that I didn't want to do all the work. I knew that when I retired from hair braiding and I gave it to my 16 year old three years ago and she is doing amazing. And that helped me to appreciate more of the value of connecting, letting things go, allowing others to blossom. And you're carrying on in the same strength that you started with, if not more. You know, uh, my second month, I made more money not doing anything and just delegating. And that's when I knew the collaborative side was it was working. It was good for me. It was good for them because I was pouring into other cleaning companies and resting my soul at the same time. So I wouldn't give that up for anything. Well, it sounds like there's an evolution, not only of the business your mother started and that you jo joined into that you created then. But the evolution is the ones that your kids are now picking up. And I hear an evolution in your personal life coming too. Yes, I cannot wait. It, it's, it's, it's astounding. Um, the joy behind it and just the, 
watching them grow, it's priceless. And I would encourage anyone that is thinking about starting a cleaning company that, you know, have that itch within them to go ahead and do it. Because that is an industry that I don't care what AI comes about, what robot does. That <laughs> robot cannot make you feel warm and fuzzy. You can't hug the robot and tell me you're feeling passionate about it. And that person cannot give you exactly what you need. So um, a lot of cleaners were afraid of the, the whole robot and the AI thing. And, and don't be. You know, we provide a service that's very personable. We are needed and we are no longer chopped liver. We are at the top of the, the, the pay grade if you're doing and structuring everything right. And you're at the top of the food chain because I don't think COVID is gone. I don't no, think no. these pandemics are gone. No. So they're going to need us more. Yep. And um, the dividing factor for cleaners is that cleaners don't tend to take care of themselves like they should. You but know, that is true. Work, yeah, we work so much and, you know, we don't give ourselves what we need. Pampering, a massage, even exercise because we're so exhausted, you know, from doing it. And I weigh my woes, Dave, and I'm, I'm balanced with what I do because even those that I talk that's on the commercial side, um, I talk with a, a commercial cleaner. She she made about, I don't know, about three, four million dollars. And the paperwork and the, the ups, the downs, the all arounds, having a supervisor, making sure the supervisor's doing good, checking in, that everyone do payroll. Yep. It's yep. the same exhaustion that I have. So for me, I'm like, hey, my kids are not going to be babies for long they'll be able to take off and then i won't need all this that i have all that i have dave is for the kids i'm very simple i say if y'all find me in a one bedroom two by two cell like i'm in prison don't say mama didn't tell you so because less for me is more and i want to enjoy more things that, in life than actual materialistic things because i've oh, got so many I totally understand that. I live in a 400 foot, uh, 400 square foot uh, trailer and have been for seven years after I gave up the 2200 square foot house and all of the stuff. So uh, yeah. while that, that was traumatic and hard to deal with, and there's sometimes I miss a few things. I will go agree with that. <laughs> you know what? You know, that's what I did when I came to Florida. I said, I want to decomplicate and de-stress and moving to 400 square feet did it. Yes, good for you. And I think I'm going to follow your your lead because I, after dealing with clients and all of their stuff, I don't want it no more. I don't. Mm -mm. Less is more. That's my motto too. Less is more. Yeah. I mean, you know, we find out through life as we go that we don't need all the things that we thought we needed. And all of that just adds a lot more to everything. But hey, I champion the people that love it and, and I have no problem with it. I've just went through that part of my life. I, I hear that coming for you. Yes. Um, so other than the people, let's, let's give the audience that's listening today a little bit of a look into what does it take to be, uh, you, you said in the cleaning business, I'm gonna reach over into the residential side since that's where you're mainly at. Mm -hmm. What is a typical client? You said you have like 70% of them on retainer kind of? Yeah, um, I sell my personality. I tell all my cleaners within Cleaner Connect, sell your personality. Um, my clients know that I don't talk at work. I'm very quiet. I put them one headset, another so I can hear if a worker's calling me, if the client needs me. Um, I don't even ring my client's doorbell. I walk up to their door. I'm texting them. I'm at your door. I don't know if they're working from home. I'm very in tune with people because I love people. So I do everything possible but kiss the, the floor that they walk on to make their life easier. And I don't really get into negotiating with my prices. You know, if I tell a client that I'm coming into a 2,000 square foot house and I'm charging 525, you know, they pay me that. And not everyone is going to get that. And for some people, they're like, hey, you know, that's out of my price range. But for people that know bust down, scrub down, they understand the assignment that we have taken on mentally before we even get into your house and do the physical side. It It's, it's more of a profitable investment for the client because A, when we go back to clean, we're not in the struggle of cleaning, or two, we make life so simple for the client, they don't need us anymore. So I'm big on making it a reality for the client to make sense for them too, C-E-N-T-S. Because if I was in it just for the money, the profit would be very low for me. 
So I make my client's life simpler and mine at the same time, because if they have me ongoing, I don't want to go into their house and spend four to five hours again. We can go into their house and spend two to three doing the same job on an ongoing basis. So my typical clients are anyone, Dave, anyone that needs our service and uh, 10 out of maybe 20 people. I think probably half of them are going to book us, A, because they need us, they understand. And then the other 10, they're undecided, you know, or they got to save up. And people have told me straight up, I need to sure. save up. We'll, we'll call you in two months and we'll be ready. And right. There's a place, that, in, there's a place in a time and that time might not be today, but they understand that's the need and that's what they want. And yes. I hear what you're saying is not every opportunity is your client. No, mm -mm. unfortunately. They love us. They love who I am. I have a very huge social media platform um, that was by design. If a person can't follow you and just sit there and do this and say, wow, then I don't think you're grabbing their attention because people, honestly, they don't need to know you. They need to know what you do. And I make sure that the client knows what we do. I'm big on reviews. We've been a five-star cleaning company for eight years. I don't want anything to change about that because that's what we're giving the client over and beyond is an understatement. Um, our reviews show a reflection of just who we are. And I'm, I'm transparent and open. So if I go off on one of my kids and I mean it, like, why didn't you do that? Go back and do it again. Go sit down, be quiet. My clients don't even say anything. They're used to that. And I give them an idea of that online. I cannot fake who I am because if I did, we wouldn't provide you with the best service. So how many employees outside of your family do you, I mean, I'm not sure how many people do you have? Do you have uh, like, like I would think part -time, full time, part time people? <laughs> so I have one full time and then I have five that are part time. I can call at random. Um, a lot of these people that work for me, they have their own job, but they like to supplement their income. Sure, um, sure. Some of them during the daytime, they can come in and work with me. But like I say, my clients don't care if I come in the morning or if I come at night. They're very open with us just getting the job done. And I don't abuse that, but I appreciate that. So I'm able to utilize things, you know, hey, I might be in a crunch. We may be going out of town. I don't know. I take advantage of all the opportunity that I kind of create, you know. So do the most for your clients if you are thinking about starting a cleaning company. Um, my general contractors, it's just not for construction clean. I've been into my general contractors' homes. I've cleaned their offices. My children have cleaned their cars. My personality is for sale. And what my personality says, Dave, is that you can trust us with everything that you own. You're going to understand that we know what you need, and we're going to give it to you without a shadow of a doubt. And I think that's the hardest thing for companies to sell is their personality. But if you don't let your guard down and you're just about sending invoices, you know, you're not, date. I'm dating my general contractors. You donuts, you're hungry, you need some, some coffee. I do all of that for them because for me, this is my livelihood. This is how I survive. My general contractor just paid my light bill. I'm very realistic. And if I'm not doing things to ensure him that when he gets something that he needs done, he think of bust down, scrub down, then I'm not doing myself any justice. So it's a long process. I love working with cleaners. I love getting them to a position where they're confident to carry on what I've taught them and make it their own. But if you don't find that common ground, you do get stuck. You do lose your drive. You want to go back and work corporate America. But everybody that talks to me, they're like, no, you know, I'm tired of working a nine to five. I need to do what I'm passionate about. So I help them to do it. I can only do so much, but that's my encouragement to anyone that's thinking about doing it. Now, folks, if you've been watching the video up to now, I have put up several times uh, Angel's email address so that you can email her. Uh, you can find her on Facebook. But I didn't find a website by design. Uh, no, no website at all. Believe it or not, I had a website, but it was all geared towards Angel's Cleaning Services. And I never did the full switch. So I have a Facebook platform, uh -huh. Instagram, TikTok uh -huh. platform, and they can email me. But I will say that I've been told by one general contractor, the other four said they could care less. He said, Angel, you should get a website. 
He said, what if I was a person that only booked off of websites? And he made me think. So that is something that I am I am thinking about doing. But I honestly, I, I don't have a website for bust down, scrub down, cleaning. Well, so. and, and, and I thought that was interesting because, as you said here during our podcast today, that it was all about social media and you're selling who you are. Websites don't sell who you, you are. They sell your services. And as in our conversation today, this has been about people and you and your kids and the relationship, not the cleaning. And I think that's what's interesting here. And I think you would find that more with the residential than the commercial. Residential yeah. doesn't really need a website. They need you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm open to all criticism. I love feedback. That's how we, we get to where we're at. Um, I cleaned a client's home day for a whole year. And I said, she never complained about anything. This is weird. So I asked her <laughs> what we could do better. She told me after cleaning and washing her husband's underwear for a year that he didn't like that. I said, so you let me clean and wash his underwear for a year and fold them all neat? And he didn't like that? So... You have to ask sometimes, you know, for that corrective criticism. It doesn't make me feel bad. It actually empowers me because I know how to move, not with just that client, but with other clients. So I took what he said into consideration and I just might. I started on it, just haven't finished the website. Well, you know, the, I'm not saying you need a website, not at all. That Don't get me wrong. I just couldn't find it. And I'm thinking, okay, so am I just missing it? But then I came to realize that you're doing everything through social media. And I just kind of had this feeling, even before we got on the podcast and talked today, that this was going to be about that big smile I'm seeing right now and <laughs> not about the actual service of cleaning. And I think this is what sets apart businesses. Yeah. And I, and I have a bidding class that I do here at the Academy. And I said, you know what? What makes you different than the next person is not the actual process of what you're doing, Mm -hmm. but the value that you bring to what you're doing. And I think that's what you're talking about today. Yes, it is. It's so important. And I don't think people put it into practice enough, but they don't put it into practice enough because they don't even realize that they need to put it into practice. And that's why I like to do a lot of one-on-ones. You know, I consult with cleaners all the time, but it's not, again, it's not about the money because some clients, that's all they need, Dave, is that, cons that one-time consultation. They don't even go into business building. They're stuck right there and they run with everything I told them because I'm big on making it make sense and your profit margin should not suffer. It's just key steps you have to do. And, you know, you can take your business to whatever level you want it to be at. The thing is, Angel, the money, when we when we really don't focus on the money, the money will come. And I think that's the one thing you, you've said here today is that when you realize that it is about choosing the right one. And you said you don't bid because I don't have to, because you have a value and your customers appreciate your value. Those that are coming to you, I'm thinking a lot of these are word of mouth, correct? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yes. And they understand that value before they're willing to pay for that value because that's what they've not received or they don't want to have the experience altogether of something else. And right. so you're selling more the experience rather than the process or the end use product. Yes, absolutely. It's a joy. Um, it's tough, but it's a joy. If I was scaled back, you know, um, maybe about 15 years, I would not be doing, you know, the residential side. But that's why I work so vigorously with my children so that they're set up to be more successful than I am. You know, I don't need any child walking in my shadow if they don't want to you know, take on the cleaning industry, they don't have to, but run the business on the side of you are the supervisor and you're delegating, you know, just don't allow it to dwindle. And the importance of that, I've gotten a great feedback from my kids like, yeah, ma, you know, if you, you said you didn't want to do it. I could do this, you know, I could run it. So that makes me happy because I don't want my children to feel like they're in a position where they have to do this, you know, so helping your kids, nurturing them along the way, being their cheerleader and instilling that value, it's brought us to this point of the unity that we have. And that I wouldn't trade for anything, you know. So as time goes on, we'll see what happens. But in the meantime, between time, we are open. We are taking clients and we're definitely open to collaborating with other cleaners.
Well, folks, you know, usually I have to ask my guest what's their last parting words, and I just don't think there's anything better than what Angel just gave you, folks. There it is right there. You know, we're open for business. We've got a hurricane facing us, looking at us in the eye. Uh, she's in the truck. She's got to go. But I got two questions I want to ask of you before I let you get in the driver's seat. Okay. Where were you born? Right here in Tampa, Florida. Okay, we're not going to go to the other question. I'm not going to ask that. I've told mom told me a long time ago, and you never ask a woman, and I'm not going to ask that question. Okay. How um, old am I? No, I didn't ask that question now, I'm Angel. 42. I did not. I said it. I said I've been here 42 wonderful years. I am I am in love with my age. My age has shown me the progress that I've made, and it's constantly reminded me, Dave, of how I'm going to continuously instilling that value into my kids. I told my son, I said, hey, by the time you're 25, you shouldn't be working no more. That's what. That's how I can make it make sense. He has to see that from what I've taught him because I don't babysit my kids. I don't hold their hand. Once I know you know, I let go. That's how my mom did me. So I'm, I'm putting into practice some things she just didn't know I needed at the time because if my mom knew I needed an LLC, if my mom knew that I needed all this business structure, I'm pretty sure she would have gave it to me. But see, she didn't know at that time. I know. So my son, 17, he has an LLC. He's doing great. So it's no reason for him to hustle backwards in a sense like I did. You know, I got to Okay, so let's, let, let, let's give son a plug here. Let, let, tell people who he is, what what's his business? What? Come on, his, give it up. His business is Javins Culinary LLC, J-A-V-I-N Culinary LLC. Um, he feeds anywhere from 200 to 20 people. He loves what he's do. He's known for his award-winning collard greens. So, Dave, you can make a trip to St. Pete in February because my son is going to be there with his award-winning gumbo-style collard greens, and they are amazing. They are so good. You don't need no hot sauce. Okay, right there, 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 there you have it, folks. If you're, <laughs> if you're in that area of Florida, uh, make sure you get there. Okay, so here's yes. the other question I have for you. What is on your personal bucket list for next year? My personal bucket list for next year is to have a book written. Write a book about all my woes and just life in general. Um, we're very comedial online. We, we tell a lot about what we do online, me and my family. And I've been told several times that I should just have a book just about life. Um, of course, cleaning is going to be coupled within that book. That book could not just be about cleaning. It has to be about cleaning and our life because we incorporate everything together. They're, they're, they're integrated <laughs> like this. Yes, literally. Because, you know, when you got to tell a kid to sit down, you're probably at a client's house cleaning. So, hey, it all works. But I would love to do that. Um, I just need to buckle down and um, relax so that I could get it done. Okay, so folks, we're going to let Angel go here. Uh, a few little things you can find us on, uh, if you're watching the, the video, uh, Beyond Clean with Ace at podbean.com. You can find us on Amazon. You can listen to this on Audible. We're also over there on Apple. We've got all of those things, just like Angel. You know, we like all the social media. We're all over the place. Yes, we're closing in on our the end of our seventh year of podcasting. We would encourage you to join us and you can hear, hey, if you've got some story to tell, whether it's in the cleaning industry or not, we want to hear about it because as we said, it's beyond clean. We don't just clean for a living. And I think we, you know, we didn't talk about cleaning much today at all. It was all about who life and everything else. And I think that's what we really like to do here at the podcast so, you know, the reason I ask Angel the two questions, people ask me that, why do you ask these questions? We know that Angel is born and bred Florida. We know where she's going and what she's doing now. You know what? The end of her chapter isn't written yet, just like yours. If you're listening right now, it's the same way. So what I'm going to tell you is make sure that whatever you do between now and the time you hear from us again, Make sure that that journey is healthy, positive, and proactive. Thanks, Angel, for being on the podcast today. Thank you for having me. It was a joy. We look forward to getting you back again. You know, let's talk to people after the hurricane and let's tell them how it went. Absolutely. I look forward to it. Keep up the good work, Dave. I thank you.